Welcome to the Weekly Lead. I'm Pastor Becky Tirabasi, and every week I want to encourage you to be a leader in your sphere of influence. Will you join me for this week's message? This is an exciting podcast for me. Actually, it's a two-part podcast. I have recently received emails from men and women who've been reading my book that I wrote over 35 years ago called Let Prayer Change Your Life. And I don't know what the big spurt is for people to suddenly find my book or suddenly decide to write to me. But I know one thing. I wrote the book and in the very beginning I said, I am convinced that if you will discover prayer for what it really is, a conversation between two people who love each other, which is a quote from Roz Brinker, and if you will decide to pray, meaning make an appointment with God and keep it every day for the rest of your life, and have a design for prayer, I wrote in the very beginning of the book, you will be a powerful and effective prayer. So what did a woman write to me this week? She said, 25 years ago, I read your book, and it had a powerful effect on my Christian walk. She said, I realize the importance of spending time with God in prayer and his word. So I too created a journal and I've never looked back. I can't begin to tell you how much it means to me. Then a pastor wrote to me and he said, I'm a senior pastor and I've been practicing the My Partner Prayer Notebook for the last four months. It has been a blessing to read your book, Let Prayer Change Your Life. I'd love to keep in touch with you as I continue to seek the Lord, but I desire to have a deeper walk with Jesus and increase the quality and discipline of my prayer life. But since I started this practice of talking to God and listening to, listening to God, I have been hooked. I even feel out of place without my partner prayer notebook. Then I received a text from someone close to me, a new believer, and he said this, Becky, Can you refer me to scripture on how the Bible says to pray and what I'm supposed to be praying for? I feel like my prayers fall on deaf ears and I get so discouraged. I'm not going to stop praying. I just don't know if I'm doing it right or praying the right stuff. Well, believe me, you've come to the right place. And I mean that. I too, as a young Christian, uh, did not know how to pray. And I would ask people, how do you pray? How do you pray? And no one seemed to give me a pattern for prayer that was repeatable. And that's very important. I I hope you understand what I'm saying here, that I don't wake up and have a whim in the morning, like, ah, I should pray for this. Or, hmm, I don't feel like praying today. I wake up every morning and I've made a decision that I'm going to pray in four specific prayer patterns by talking to God. And then, which will be part two of this podcast, I listen to God in five patterns. So the four patterns in which I pray are praise, admit, request, and thanks. This is how I talk to God. And you might think this is so elementary, but I have to tell you for 40 years, every single day, that's like 14,500 plus days, I have used the same pattern in order to talk to God and to listen to God. My part in prayer, the way I talk to God, these four patterns spell part, P-A-R-T. The P is for praise. And for those of you who know me, I've been using the Change Your Life Daily Bible, which is a special edition of the One Year Bible, and encouraging you to do the same thing. But for over... 38 years since it's been in existence, I've used a one-year Bible template to pray and listen to God. It is the Psalms begin every single day for me in prayer. And there are 150 Psalms in the Bible. So every day in the Change Your Life Daily Bible, you will read at least one Psalm or a portion of a song, which is praise. The Psalms are written prayers, written hymns, written songs. They, they are the prayer book of, of the church. They are the prayer book uh, for the Hebrews, for the Jews. They are the, pray, the book of prayer in the Bible. So I open my time with God every day using the template of a written prayer 
wherever I am in the daily Bible. And recently, and you read through the Psalms twice a year in the daily Bible, as I was reading the praise section, Psalm 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, they're the most amazing prayers. They teach you how to pray. They give you permission to pray and say certain things you might not have felt you had courage to say, pray, that you were permitted to pray. They let you complain. They let you cry. They let you plead. They let you ask for forgiveness. They let you confess. They teach you how to pray. So the Psalms, I've often thought, are your way, my way of saying to the Lord, I love you. But over the past few years, I've realized that the Psalms also teach you to say, I trust you. Isn't that amazing? I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. The admit section is the second way I talk to God. And remember, in this two-part podcast, I'm going to focus on talking to God in the first podcast because it's a lot easier, really, than listening to God. But talking to God includes admission or confession of sin. And not just pointing out to God what other people do wrong, but telling God you're sorry, asking God to forgive you. And just like in the praise section where you might say, I love you, or I trust you, Lord. In the admit section, you say, I'm sorry, forgive me, Lord. And my secret here would be, be specific. Psalm 139 verses 23 and 24 are verses in the book of Psalms that help me be specific with God. It's kind of a a prayer that opens my heart and mind to ways I might want to hide myself, my sin from myself and God. And when it's an invitation to God to open my heart and mind and let him speak. So Psalm 139 says, search me, O God. It's like a light, a flashlight and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts and see if there's any offensive way in me, and lead me in the way that is everlasting. And then always, often, I have a very specific thought that comes to mind. I encourage you just to, in the praise section, rewrite a book of, uh, 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 one of the Psalms every single day if you have no way of opening yourself up to God in prayer. Make it a Psalm, a written paraphrased, personal prayer. In the admit section, be specific of ways God is showing you to confess sin or make your life more open to his spirit, to change a specific aspect of your life, to make amends with someone. And then the request section, which makes your life uh, very fun and hopeful when you're asking God for help. And I, I love Psalm 121. It's basically saying, send help, send help, help, send help. That's easy. And requests should be full of intercession, meaning requests for others, not just for yourself. It turns your eyes off of yourself and onto others. It's pleading for God to help others. It, it, it brings such joy into your life to see God working in other people's lives. And of course, You can request for yourself, but the request section should be full of requests for others, intercession for others, as well as for yourself. And then there's thanks and P-A-R-T, praise, admit, request, where I say send help and then thanks. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Psalm 105 says, I give thanks to the Lord. And I, I want to remind you the a very popular 21st century uh, ec- exercise is to have a gratitude list. But I love to turn my thanks to God, not to uh, chance or luck or 
even friends, I like to think God has answered this prayer. God has opened this door. God has helped me. So when you praise, admit, request, and thanks, make sure that thank you note, that written thank you note is to the Lord, acknowledging, recognizing something he has done for you. And then the final uh, way I, I wrap this up is to talk to God and listen to God. And I I make this appointment the best hour of my day. I call it the hour of power. And I talk to God through praise, admit, request, and thanks. And the part two, next week's podcast will be God's part to me, listening to God through listening messages, New Testament, Old Testament, and Proverbs. I hope that you will make your hour of power the best day, the best appointment, the best hour of your week, starting with your part, talking to God, and then making sure you include God's part, listening to God. Amen? Amen. I hope you've been encouraged by this message, and I hope you join me weekly for the Weekly Lead Podcast. Meanwhile, follow me daily on Instagram. The link is in the bio with everything you need to become a weekly leader.